Okay, today we're going to talk about standing waves, pipes, and tubes. Okay. Pipes and tubes are little different ways or different things you can use to make specific frequencies or specific sounds or say like bunches of frequencies and sounds. Okay, um, there are some examples of them. You can see that one of the qualities we're looking for when we talk about pipes and tubes making sounds, especially as musical instruments, is that the mouth of them the uh, diameter is really small compared to the length. And that actually, if it's not, that becomes a pretty complicated factor. And if you're looking at like very careful calculations of concerning pipes and tubes, you have to actually factor in the ratio between those things. We're not gonna do that in our calculations today. Um, again, the length of pipe has to be significantly greater than the width, otherwise that the calculation becomes a lot more difficult to do. You can see that in this little uh, pan flute there, that there's like a bunch of lengths. You blow across it and it makes a lot of different um, sounds. The, low, the longest one is the lowest one and the shortest one is the highest one. And, that's, and in that case, the greater length one is a longer wavelength, which is gonna correspond to, since speed equals frequency times wavelength, the sound for all of them, the, the sound is sound in air. So they're all gonna have the same speed, the same wave speed. So for us, that means that if they have a longer wavelength in the longer pipes, that's gonna mean that those longer wavelengths are gonna mean lower frequency. That's why the longer ones are gonna have a lower pitch. The ones with shorter wavelengths, the shorter pitch, the shorter um, length ones are gonna have a longer are going to have a higher frequency. In the pictures that is showing here, you can see is a standing wave. Um, the middle picture has two different waves. You can see that the blue one is moving from left to right, and the red one is moving from right to left. Um, the and they're joining together. And in, and the black one is actually with a combination of the two. And you can see that the that in the black one, there are little uh, red dots, and those points seem to be still. And they are still because the waves are always combining together in such a way that they cancel out, and that's where they stay still. And you can see that in the, there are some spots where it moves a lot, there, where there's like a maximum motion. That's where there's always com where they're always combining to move that giant amount. The spots that don't move, you can see this in the picture on the bottom, are the nodes. Those are the points that are still. The points that have the maximum motion, the ones where they combine to make the, the, the highest amplitude, those are anti-nodes. I also want to point out that in those that in that standing wave in the center, that you can see that the um you can see that the anti that the amplitude of the standing wave, the one that's made like that, is actually higher than the amplitude of either one of those individual waves. So they combine to make that taller, higher amplitude wave. If it's a sound, it'd be a louder sound. Again, like I said, those reflected waves are gonna combine with the generated waves to increase the total amplitude. And that's a reason that we use them. Okay. And the length is set so that the reflections from the inside the tube match up. And they're gonna increase the amplitude at those anti-nodes, and they're gonna decrease the amplitude at the nodes, just like you can see in the two images. Okay. In a pipe or tube, a standing wave, wave forms, but it doesn't look exactly like these strings that are shown. I'll explain the difference when we take a look at them. Okay. Well, first we're gonna look at pipes that are open at both ends. And there are lots of instruments like that. There's a trumpet, a harmonica, I put a couple clarinets there. You can see that you blow into one end and the sound comes out the other end. So they're gonna be open at both ends. I drew like a cutaway. So that you can, it shows the openings at the two ends. Okay. okay, at one end, there's an input vibration, like where you actually blow into it, whether there's a reed or whether there's a mouthpiece or whether you just blow across it like a bottle or whatever. Okay, that, that there's an end that's gonna be input and that's gonna be an anti-note there's gonna be a lot of vibration there because you're blowing into it. The other end is gonna be an anti-node too because that's where the sound is gonna come out of it. Okay. And that's the output, that's where it's gonna come out. Now at the fundamental vibration, 
there'll be one node in the middle. And the pattern will look kind of like this. You can see that the anti-node is where it's spread out, and it's going to be on both sides, and there's a node in the center. And again, that's the fundamental vibration. Now, if you follow either one of those along, you'll see it doesn't make an entire wave. It doesn't go from top to bottom to top. It only goes from top to bottom. That's not an entire wave. That's like half of a wave. The same for the other pattern. It goes from the bottom to the top. It only goes halfway around. So the length of the tube only corresponds to half of a wavelength at the fundamental vibration. The truth is that the tube can actually make all kinds of vibrations that are multiples of that half wavelength. But at the fundamental, it's only going to make half a wavelength. And that's all we're going to concentrate on in the video. Now, let's just open up one end, but close at the other, like blowing across a bottle or something like that. Um, so other, some instruments are like that too, like for example, um, instruments where like a, instruments where the sound comes out the same end that you blow into. Um, those little, some of those little, um, I'm thinking what they're called, um, they, they actually do have um, pan flutes where they're closed at the end and the sound comes out the same place that you blew into. Those are examples where, of pipes that are closed at one end. Okay. Now, in that case, the input vibration, the place you blew into, is an antinode. Okay. But it's also the output, too. Okay. The output sound is at the same end. Okay. And if you look at it, the far end, this, the, the end that's actually closed, then it has to be a node. It can't vibrate there because the sound can't come out. What that means is the pattern looks like that. It looks like half of what we saw when the pipe was open at both ends. And again, that's again that's half of what we saw in the other one. So it's half of a half of a wave, which is a quarter of a wavelength, that fundamental vibration. Again, there are other patterns you can make that fit inside that tube that are standing waves. But the fundamental one is going to be one quarter of a wavelength. That's the pattern that's going to fit inside there. Now, what's the point of all this? There's a couple things you can do with this information. One thing you can do is you can take the frequency and you can solve for how long the tube has to be. If you want to, let's say that you know you want a particular frequency for a tone to come out and you want to find out how long it has to be. Maybe you want to build a musical instrument of a particular length or you want or a particular tone and you want to find out, well, how long of a, a tube or a pipe do I need to build? Okay. Let's do an example. Let's say we know the pitch we want to make. Okay. We know that's for, uh, that we're going to find the length of a tube with both ends open that plays concert A, 440 hertz, as its fundamental vibration. So we know it's open at both ends. We know that it's got a particular frequency, and we want to find out how long that tube has to be. So before we can do that, we need to find out what its wavelength is. Okay, that's our goal. Okay, and since it's going to be a sound in air, we're going to use the speed of the the value for the speed of sound in air. There's a, I mean, the value varies based on uh, temperature and uh, density. We're going to use 345 meters per second. Again. You can use a value based on you know, where you are or what the air is like where you are. The, we're going to use the equation speed equals frequency times wavelength, an equation we use for waves a lot. We plug 345 meters per second in for the speed of sound. And we put in 440 hertz for the frequency. And we're going to solve for wavelength. We divide 345 by 440 hertz. We get 0.78 meters. That's the wavelength. That's not the length of the tube, that's just the wavelength itself. We can solve for that though. We said earlier that we we we, can, we said earlier that if both ends are open, that the length of the tube is gonna be equivalent to half of a wavelength. Remember, it didn't go all the way across, just from top to bottom or from bottom to top. Okay. So the length's gonna be half of that. It's gonna be half of 0.78, that's 0.39 meters. So that's how long it has to be, a little more than a foot. That's how long our, our, our open-ended tube would need to be if we're going to blow across it and we're going to get a concert A for our fundamental vibration. The other thing we can do is we can solve for using pipe length. We know what the pipe, pipe length is, and we want to find out what the frequency is. So let's say we had like a really short pipe, like 9 centimeters long. That must be real narrow on the end. And we blow across it. It's only open on one end, so it's taped up. And we want to find out what its fundamental frequency is. Um, we don't we can't measure it. Maybe we can't, like, we don't have some kind of, like, frequency meter so we can see what it is. We want to find out what we, what we should expect it to be. 
Okay. okay. So first we're going to find the wavelength. Okay. Remember for when it's keep we're keeping in mind only one end of it is open. And so we saw in our picture that it was like a half of a half of a wave. So the length will be a quarter of the wavelength. And they tell us the length. So 0 0.09 meters is a quarter of that wavelength. Multiply both sides by four. We get 0.36 meters is the wavelength. That's how long the wave's going to be. But that's not really what the question asks. It asks for the frequency. But that's not hard to find. We have an equation that relates frequency and wavelength together. Okay. And we're going to use that speed of sound and air that we used in the last problem. Speed equals frequency times wavelength. 345 meters per second equals frequency times 0.36 meters. We divide 345 meters per second by 0.36 meters. We get 958 hertz, and that's our frequency. Those are two ways we're going to use that. And that's how we're going to relate our knowledge of the fundamental vibration of the two types of pipes to solving for particular quantities relating to pipe length and frequency.